as we kick off May, hard to believe we're here, May 1, 2020, it's Friday. Uh, thank you again for, for being a, you know, a, a lifeline for, for Team Gallagher. We're, we want to be here every day for you, and we're grateful that you're here for us. Uh, as the nation is wearing down, yesterday you probably saw the, uh, the headlines as Michigan protesters stormed the state capitol. Um, there was a, uh, <laughs> some were chanting, let us in, let us in. Um, the Senator, State Senator Dana uh, Polhanke, a Democrat, tweeted a picture of what she described as armed demonstrators yelling at her from the visitor's gallery. She said some of her colleagues were wearing bulletproof vests inside the, the House chamber. Here's what she tweeted, directly... <laughs> Again, I'm. Uh, this is a nervous laughter, because I never thought I'd report a story like this uh, in all my years. Here's what she tweeted: directly, uh, directly above me, men with rifles yelling at us. Some of my colleagues who own bulletproof vests are wearing them. I have never appreciated our sergeants at arms more than today. Of course, people right away were saying, wait a minute, how do you roam around the state capitol with guns? Well, Michigan has allowed guns inside the capitol building, but they banned protest signs several years ago, according to foxnews.com. So you can't carry a sandwich board, but you certainly can carry a long gun. And there were men and people with long guns in the state capitol, angry, let us in, had to be a, a scene right out of a movie. And... You know, plenty of people um, around the, the, the country cheered these protesters on. And the reason they're cheering them on is because that, ex that, that embodies the, the, the mindset, the attitude of millions and millions of Americans. I was just on a call and somebody was uh, pointing out that New York is a bit of an island. In a way, New York, even New Jersey, the Northeast has been sort of isolated in a way from the rest of the country. The rest of the country has responded the way, uh, as a result of what we were seeing out of New York. And some of these governors in Colorado, a Democrat, by the way, Florida, a Republican, Georgia, a Republican, some of these states that are starting to open are, are, are sort of acknowledging that we're not New York in Florida, or we're not New York somewhere else. New York's got to still get through it. And the things that are coming out of New York are so bat crap crazy. As everybody there is hunkered down and, and afraid and masked up and gloved up, and, and you keep hearing people say over and over again, it's the subways, it's the MTA. It's the people that are on, on top of each other in the subways, breathing on each other, giving each other this virus. Are you ready for this? The governor of New York, who oversees the subway system in New York, has just now ordered the subways to be disinfected on a daily basis. Now, in May. You think I'm kidding? It's a true story. It's a true story. The governor, Andrew Cuomo, has instructed the Metropolitan Transportation Authority in New York City to figure out a way to disinfect subway trains every 24 hours. For now, as they begin, they're trying to do it like from 1 to 5 in the morning. They've never done this before. Ever. In fact, even through the, 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 the spikes and the deaths and the bodies piled up, and listen, there are Armageddon stories out of New York. There are stories that are so grotesque out of New York, it isn't even funny. The funeral home stacking bodies, allegedly, inside U-Haul trucks that are unrefrigerated and the neighbor is complaining, complaining of the stench. That's, I mean, these stories, are they, 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 they couldn't keep up. There have been too many deaths. Can't pretend that hasn't happened. And, and so when you see that on the nightly news, you say, oh my gosh, could that happen here? But a funny thing happened on the way to Armageddon. All of our rights have been taken away. All of our, all of our, our freedoms 
are being abridged. You're watching police officers harass women who have little children who are playing with other children. You see people getting yelled at on the beach. I watched a video last night of a 93-year-old man with his elderly wife on the beach and, a, and two cops on horseback telling them they can't sit on the beach. They were about six feet apart from each other sitting on the beach. Let, let me give you a little, a little sliver of what Florida craziness looks like. And it's, it's such an insignificant thing. But for somebody who wants to get their car washed, they've closed the car washes for the most part in Pinellas County, Florida. And I kept thinking, why would you close a drive through car wash? Who, no, you put you put your card in the slot. No, you don't come in contact with anybody. You know the kind that they have at the convenience stores? Oh, yeah, they're closed because we're supposed to not be exhibiting movement. You're not supposed to drive anywhere. You're supposed to be hunkered down in your home. In other words, there's this implication from Maine to Florida to, to Ohio to wherever. You're supposed to never leave your house. That's the implication. Now, you, we know practically that's not true. We know pragmatically that isn't accurate. You can go get groceries. You can go get, but this is the craziness. You can go to a Walmart, buy clothes. Unless you're in Michigan, I guess she wrote that off. But most, most states, you know, the, the stores, the super stores that have grocery stores along with the rest of the department store or whatever, you can go anywhere you want. You can buy clothes. But you can't go in to buy the, you know what, I, you've, you've heard all these contradictions. This has been an erratic, inconsistent, nonsensical mess. We were told by the World Health Organization that masks didn't work. Don't buy masks. Our own Surgeon General told us, don't buy masks. Now, they're tell, now there are masks that are required, required, I think at now every airline. There are businesses that are requiring masks. There are communities like New York where you have to wear a face mask in public. Wonder what the prison sentence is if you refuse to wear a mask. I'm serious. I, I'm only half sarcastic. This has been an inconsistent, erratic, incoherent mess. We don't know how to handle this. And you, you turn on night, the, 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 the cable news shows and the nightly news, they're all, all the experts are contradicting each other left and right. I had a friend t in Dallas County tell me I'm so terrified of, uh, of, of uh, this, our, we had the highest spike in, uh, in, 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 in infections this week in Dallas, and yet these dummies are opening. And then I looked up the statistics. There have been several hundred deaths in Dallas County, which is terrible. Several hundred deaths. I mean, this is, I, I'm, I mean, you want to go by data, and that's what we're, we're living off of is the data. You want to figure out what the data is? I mean, 2.6 million people in Dallas County, and I apologize, it wasn't 30 or 40, it was 104 deaths. So far, there have been 104 deaths in a community of 2.6 million people, and people aren't supposed to leave their house. Now, uh, I don't want anybody sick. I don't want anybody to, to get to die. I don't want anybody to go through the horror of coronavirus. But that image of, of people storming the Capitol in Michigan this week, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to see more of that kind of protest. We're going to see more Americans who are fed up, and they're losing everything anyway, so I'm afraid people are going to start saying, I got nothing to lose by breaking the law. Salon owners who are opening up, restaurants. I saw the guy on Tucker Carlson's show last night in Maine. The numbers in Maine are even more crazy. There are very few cases in Maine. The whole state is shut down like it's a Stephen King novel, like the fog is out there waiting to snatch you up and, and get you. Um, I, 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 we are at a weird place right now. And I sure hope that you'll join us and, and weigh in as you have every day through this whole crisis here in our relieffactor.com studios, back in my kitchen, working from home, as some of us are blessed to be able to do. A lot of things are going to change going forward. Not sure when normal happens, but the process is beginning, and I think it's largely beginning because of the anger, the resentment, the frustration of millions of law-abiding citizens who are fed up. 1-800-655-MIKE, 17 past the hour. Join us. 
1-800-655-6453. Press 1 to come on air with us. Press 2 to leave a voicemail message. You can text us your comments to the MyPillow text line at 800-655. Mike, we're live streaming the show like we do each and every day on our YouTube channel. We please uh, invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just find The Mike Gallagher Show on YouTube. Take us with you on your app wherever you go. We are 24-7. We're ubiquitous. Go to MikeOnline.com. Download our podcasts, by the way. More and more people are doing that, and it's a terrific way to listen to all the highlights, the best parts of the Mike Gallagher Show, maybe the worst. You can fast forward, pause, rewind, download our podcasts, put it on your favorite platform, and uh, start. you can do that, too. Find out how. Go to MikeOnline.com, MikeOnline.com, 